time smells like boiled chicken. And when mm, there's that boiled, sounds appetizing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's boiled chicken going on. This is going on for a while. We get done with the chicken. Carrie carves it up, you know, tosses it in the, in the pouches and throws them in the refrigerator and everything. All right, it's time to feed the dog. So you go and get a, quart, a, a, a cup of chicken, fill it up with, with chicken bits, and you go over and you're supposed to go talk to the dog. <laughs> hey, dog, here's food. Dog wants food. There's only one problem. You've got a cat. I've got a fucking cat. So now Shadow refuses to eat his kibble, refuses to eat his soft food, will only eat the churus and chicken. And you blame him? I'm going to kill him. Because my dog, my dog is so kind, she will let him take the food away from her. See, the trick here is you need to feed them simultaneously by taking the cat first to another room. We tried that. He runs away from the other room and comes in. So I'm going to have to toss him in my office when I feed the dog. Yeah. That's the thing. You get, you've got to close the door so he can't get out of wherever you've got his food. So, you know, now I have to fight. I have to kick away the cat. I have to try and feed the dog. And then, of course, then there's the kibble war that comes afterwards. So anyway, the, the good news is... Is that, a book, is that a book title? The Kibble Wars? I'm thinking what I really need to do is I need to write a book called The Derpy Chronicles. That just basically is a, a, a biographical summation of what has happened since we got this mutt. Week by week, the things that happened, the progress made, the slips backward, the anecdotes, if you can call it that. Uh, yeah, because there's some pretty damn funny ones, like Shadow stealing her bed the other day. I've never seen a dog so confused in my life. I want to go over to her and say, you can kill him. You can eat him. You're allowed. Well, she's him's too, chicken. Take a she's bite. Too sweet. Yeah, him's chicken. <laughs> so anyway, that's what's going on in my house. Absolute pandemonium chaos. Which is why we should move on to saying, howdy folks, and welcome to another episode of the Dev Robot Society. I'm Paul E. Cooley. Joining me as always, my, my two co-hosts, my two fiendly, fiendish co-hosts. I can't I'm not sure now. what you were going to say there. I, I was like, uh, yeah, it's like, coming. It's coolie. No, anyway, Veronica Jagger and Terry Mixon, who are both looking very well suntanned and baked and rested from their vacation. Apparently, you think Vegas is somewhere on the Florida coast because that is not what happened. And apparently, you think I can tan, which is laughable. I I I go out on the beach and like go like this with my forearms and signal planes. I am pale, sir. Signal planes. Yes. Wow. wow. The beacons are lit. God no, calls for aid. Yes. Now you yes. you made it you made it sound like you made it sound like Vegas didn't have any sunlight. That can't possibly be true. Uh -huh. I didn't see a whole lot of sunlight. Well, of course, it may have been because I was inside almost exactly. all the time. But. Yeah, I, and you never know if it's actual light or it's, if it's being reflected from who knows how many billboards, spheres, marquees, um, taxis, showgirls, scantily clad <laughs> cowboys. Scantily clad cowboys. Scantily okay. clad cowboys. Um, there's... Uh, when the sun goes down, there are some interesting photo opportunities on the strip. Many of them in chaps. Okay. <laughs> so uh, mm -hmm. I guess we should just go ahead and move into how the hell have you been doing and what have you been up to besides Vegas? Uh, oh, you have to say who gets to go first. Um, let's see. I've been recovering my voice from being in Vegas. That was fun. Um, not because I was sick, just when you live someplace that has a lot of humidity and then you go to some place that has no humidity and a bunch of smoke of various kinds and you're not used to that, um, your lungs don't like it. So I've been recovering from that. And I foresee a portable humidifier in my room next time. Oh, really? I I've had one and it works okay. What I brought with me that actually helped a ton is essentially it's a portable nebulizer. Mm. It's called a vocal mist. And 
it's got, you know, you can either put it together like that for purposes, or it has a, a face mask. I'm just calling it how it is. It's USB powered and then it's sailing. Literally little sailing packets. That's it. Yeah. And it it does work. It works really well at like helping to rehydrate everything and recover your voice. And I used it in the booth when I've got long days. And so I'd use that at the end of the day when I'd go up to my room and, you know, start to wind down and get ready for bed. But it only goes so far. Mm -hmm. So so yeah. Yeah, I would imagine that would be kind of an issue. You should wear a face mask just for the smoke. But I then do. nobody could see your face. Well, I actually have a clear mask that I brought with me. I didn't use it as much, but um, when we were like out and about and walking, I did use a mask. Oh, so you're going for that Hannibal stuff. Lecter look. Got it. This is money. I, I, I need to protect it. Oh, I know. I so, know. I so, yeah. So, yeah. Uh, what else? Ah. Prepping for Thanksgiving because that's always a thing. I get to meet my son's girlfriend. That's going to be fun. She looks lovely in pictures. Um, and bowling. Yeah, my life. Take the children bowling. Take them bowling. Terry, what about you, apart from being mauled by cats, which seems to be the normal? He's not being mauled. He's being loved vociferously. Leo is just happy to be here with me because he missed me while I was gone. Aww. He's not the brightest cat, and he's just happy. Oh, Jim's a pretty boy. Oh, yes, he is. Come here, big boy. <laughs> so that's all you had to report, huh? No, I got back from the con. I wrote the one remaining chapter for Empire Reborn, Whoop. and I've written four chapters for the next... Last hundred books, so about twenty thousand words ish. Cool. So pretty good. It took me a few days to get back in the swing of things because there were lots of things around the house that still needed to be brought back into normal operation as opposed to being set up for being gone for a week. Lots of extra cat boxes been out, things like that that had to be taken care of. Hmm. So fun, in other words. Yeah fun um i made some alterations that were suggested to the treadmill that i think may actually have fixed its problem oh awesome i i made them two days ago but i haven't had time to actually walk on it for more than a minute or so it feels like it has but i want to go ahead and give it about a 20 minute run yeah by run with my old legs i mean 20 minute walk to make sure that it's working right 20 minutes Sachet, you see yeah. Yep, 20 minute sachet. Mister, I'm gonna bounce my video all over the place. <laughs> your your audio and video has just gone way glitchy, man. I have? Yes, you have. Uh, I wonder what's going on with my internet. I do not know. I blame Google Google Chrome. That's what I do. Maybe maybe it's me because it looks like Veronica's doing it as well. Maybe it's my yeah. internet connection. Ah. Could be. Okay, well, maybe it's Terry's internet. Well, well, chat folks, who is it? Is it all three of us? Is it simply Paul? Is it Paul and V? Tell us, who is glitchy? Must be on your end. You just kind of fuzzed out on me. But V looks beautiful. But apart from your internet glitching, is that all you had to report? That audio was so bad that I could not actually understand what you said. V, were you able to understand what I said? No, you cut out. I did cut out. Okay, fine. This is really interesting. Hmm. Uh, what I asked was, was there anything else? Let's see. Um, Post-con? No, I don't think there is, actually. It's just been a week of, of playing catch-up and getting used to not eating out all the time. Which is a challenge. Yes. Yes, I imagine. And I know so. I enjoyed that a whole. I, I, I'd rather like not be going. I have to go out here. I, I'll take the. What am I doing today? Versus <laughs> the where are we going? Because <laughs> yeah, no. 
<laughs> Where are we going and why am I in this box? Well, while you, were guys were, while you guys were partying in Vegas, I spent the entire week recording all of Neptune's scars and getting it done. How many so, words was that? 115,000. God bless. That's, um, sir, that's a lot. I had I, I had a little bit of a head start, but I think I did 30 chapters. Damn. Yeah, 30 or 34 chapters. That's why my voice is probably pretty rough. Um, but I uh, got that done. So the patrons have it and I'm rolling out the episodes or by chapter because I'm a bastard. So, you know, some of the folks get it now. Other folks are having to get a chapter a day until I, they catch up and then they won't get but one a week until Fiendmas. And I have my plan for Fiendmas. Oh, it will be the story of Hal. For those of you who know the black, you probably have an idea of what I'm saying. Rick says, what happened to you not doing your own recording anymore? Uh, technically, I only record for the, my Patreon patrons and BMAC folk, technically. Um, with the black, obviously, I have a deal with Fireside. Although I don't know about the last three books because that's uh, kind of up in the air right now. Um, for an ancient trap and for uh, Neptune scars, I needed to get that done because those are the things that patrons are paying for is the audio more than anything. Um, I'm able to do it to a certain degree and get it done, but I'm not able to get it done the way I wish I could get it done. It doesn't sound as good to me as it should. And my addiction is just plummeting. I don't know why. But uh, I think they're good enough for folks to enjoy. I just don't know that they do very well in Audible. But they're done. So if people want them, they're done. And that means I can podcast them. I need to find uh, out if I can have that same kind of deal that I've got with Fireside with these other books. If I want to get a pro narrator like Joe Hempel or somebody else like that, it's going to take a, a group like Fireside to do it because I don't have the cash to do it. So if I want to parlay it off to somebody else, I need to I need to make a deal with with somebody else who's interested in, in making, uh, you know, sci fi suspense stuff like I do. I know people. I know you we do know talk. people. I know I, I know more people after after the week in Vegas. But yeah, there there's there's stuff that could be done. My pal, Hal. <laughs> It's that actually like the worst children's picture book ever. It's actually part one of Extinction is Hal. Part one of the Black Extinction is Hal. Um, I'm I'm really excited to bring Hal to you. <laughs> really excited. So uh, the rest of the month, I'm going to do nothing but work on Extinction because I have this done. And my goal is to get uh, Extinction done by the end of the month. And uh, then I can focus on fish, finishing up track nine in, in December while I, while I work through extinctions problems and figure out how much of it I can actually record. Because it's going to be minimum 130, max 150, 1,000 words. Yeah, it's, it's a big one. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't know how much we're going to do. But we'll find out. I, 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 I'm done making schedules. They don't fucking matter. They never fucking work. I don't make plans anymore. Fuck them. So I have goals. I have two goals for the year. And those two goals I plan on sticking because nothing else has. So I'm going to try. And Good luck with that. Once. You shut up. <laughs> You're supposed to say, go, Paul, go. Not, oh. Go, Paul, go. Yeah, yeah. Is that better? Well, enough about my horse shit. I want to hear about this Vegas thing. I want to hear about this group debauchery, all the orgies, all the drug den stuff that was going on, all the opium pipe smoking and all the gambling. I want to know all of it. Well, v, do v doesn't know anything about that because we didn't invite her to the orgies. No, no, I, I went up going to a hockey game and, um, boring. Yeah. The night's lost. It was like terrible. I'm like, and y'all took the Stanley Cup from my team, not this group. 
Oh, I was very disappointed. Damn. Oh, you're all talking trash. I will talk trash. They <laughs> currently losing to predators last time I checked. Just damn. Anyway, um, I've been hanging out with my daughter too much. So, <laughs> no, it, it's. I mean, there there were dinners and there were there there were some uh, collective brainstorming moments um a, a few interesting adventures definitely. and there was jack jack there was jack jack i miss jack jack and i missed rick i didn't miss you terry i miss v so yeah, and was there was a mini ginger nice. so he he was there too yeah he's good too he's good he people is. i even saw pictures of patrick tebby there were Patrick was there. He snuck up on me, but I snuck up on him too. So there. All right. So we've heard some of the generalities of this Vegas debauchery well, that didn't happen. Let, let me tell you at least a little bit of, of Jack Jack. Because oh, as Regal. as usual, Jack Jack was, you know, he was his normal self and he was like, Yeah, I'm I'm the one that's out of control here until Terry stepped in to help school him. Saying, no, no, oh, no, you are not out of control. Let me show you. He was talking with uh, Rick Shaw and me while V was there. And I don't, he was saying, he was complaining that I had already forgotten something that he told me. And I'm like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And, and he's like, gives that look. He's like, well, maybe I told Rick Shaw that. I was like, are you telling me that all white people look the same to you? Oh, no. And he's like, <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and later in that same conversation, uh, which the look on Veronica's face when I said that, I thought she was going to I thought she was going to fall out. <laughs> well, because um, <laughs> I don't have like straight up prosopagnosia, but there are times where I really do struggle with certain like to tell certain people apart with facial features. And it happened when I was teaching and I had if I had more than like four blonde Caucasian male students, it would take me weeks to tell them apart. Nobody else. It was always the surfer boys. I could mm -hmm. not tell them apart. And so when- It's because they're all named Chad. <laughs> well, as, as Rick- Chad or Brad. As Rick so can- when that happened, I was like, you as, know, I can kind of see it, but- As Rick can it. tell you, the two of us look a lot alike. Well, not even close. Not yeah. even close to Is he like, like four feet taller than you are? He's much taller than I am. Doesn't look quite the same. But uh, in that same conversation after, I think, I think um, Rick hadn't been there for the first part of it. And then when Rick showed up, Rick was talking trash about him. And Jack Jack said, are you, are you talking trash about me because I'm black or because I'm disabled? And I said, can it be both? Be both? <laughs> <laughs> yep yep that sounds like Bruce, a normal if you favorite. come on this show you must give as good as you can get because he's ex-military he he had he to know, know it was he coming for know. him he knows he knows he had to know it was coming for him and he brought his his partner arrived part way through the show and i got to meet andrew his partner cool he is a wonderful gentleman mm -hmm. awesome yes i'm so i'm so sad i missed him who gets just as annoyed at Jack Jack's behavior as the rest of us. It was beautiful. It was beautiful. Ah, oh, so good. Well, I'm sorry I missed that. Like oh, and we, we, sh we can't mention Jack Jack without mentioning the banana. The banana. <laughs> I don't know whether to be curious, intrigued, or terrified. I'll let, I'll, v exp I'll let V explain the banana because I already spent time explaining this one. She can do that hopefully, one. Hopefully I can, I can remember this. So at, at this conference, there's like, you know, like breakfast and whatnot. And there's assorted fruit laid out that you can grab. And of course they're bananas, so you can grab a banana. And Jack Jack had, he had grabbed one of the bananas for later. And he had it in, I think, the seat or the basket. It's of, the basket behind the seat. Okay of the the walker that he was using and every so often a comment would come out and we'd have to talk about jack jack's banana i'd bring it out for everybody to see mm -hmm. 
So Terry would just whip it out and show off the banana and comments would be made and it would go back. But this went on for quite some time. Everybody and, knows. And that, V went ahead and brought out her banana to show that it was bigger than Jack Jack's, which yes. was very cool. Mm -hmm. mine, mine wasn't as ripe either. So that, there was also that. So, Yours was more that, firm, is what you're saying. I'm just saying you <laughs> Not only you were, I was longer, thicker, <laughs> and firmer. But <laughs> so, but you know that as, as the longer you leave a banana out, it's going to ripen. Yes. It's going to lose. It, it, it's going to lose that firmness, and it might come become a little squishy. Yeah, it loses that loving feeling. Goes flaccid. <laughs> Exactly. And the problem with your um, less structurally sound bananas is that <laughs> if you forget about them and you don't know if you've placed them in the basket under the seat oh. or on the seat. He oh. inadvertently put it on the seat when he oh. took it away from me. Oh. And then, of course, he had to sit because there's a lot of walking in Vegas. And, so um, I went to bring out the banana during a comment, and it wasn't there. Oh, it was there. It was just not in the place where anyone assumed the banana would be. So who sat on the banana? Jack, Jack. Of course. Yeah. I'll bet that went well. So, uh, so yeah, there's... There, there were comments about crushed bananas going on after that. Mm-hmm. It, it's, like, um, it, it was so close, only a couple of inches from where it needed to be, was what I said. <laughs> <laughs> Since we were sticking with the banana theme. <laughs> wow. Mm -hmm. it, wow. It was... Oh, I wish I'd been there for that. Oh, oh it, was a, it was a great sequence of comments. Mm -hmm. And it just it just kept going. It, it, this wasn't just like five minutes. It was this, this this was a running gag that went on for several hours until the culmination. So, I mean, excellent storytelling. William West asks, "Why is DRS so wholesome?" <laughs> because we don't let our true selves out of the show. <laughs> I think that was sarcasm, my friend. And I'm saying I'm saying this is us behaving. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you have to catch us out in the wild to really know what we're capable of. <laughs> yes. And apologies to those of you who have. Because, um, yeah. <laughs> so apart from Jack-Jack and his squishy banana, what else do you have to report? Well, V did actually pick up some socks with bananas on them. I did. I did. So um, our, so trying to fly, I guess the stories are all in reverse. Um, so our flight was supposed to leave early afternoon on Friday. The plane that we were supposed to take from Vegas to Orlando. Um, thanks, Brett. Um, it was coming in from Colorado Springs. By 4.30, it hadn't left Colorado Springs. And so we wouldn't have left Vegas until six something Vegas time. That would have put us back in Orlando well past midnight. And we'd been up really early. So and, and getting back to Orlando and then driving, it just didn't feel safe. And so we figured, you know what? We'll just, you know, rebook the flight for the first thing in the morning. Go back. And strange enough, we get we managed to get a room at the same hotel. And we're walking back. We could not get our luggage. So our luggage got to Orlando before we did which meant that we had to pick up a couple of things that were not in the carry-ons like socks. And so oh, we no. went into one of the shops and I found banana socks. I was like, I need this to commemorate this particular trip. Now, have you so taken I pictures got... of them and sent them to Jack Jack? She sent I some to pictures. pictures to me, but I yeah. don't know that she sent them to, sent Jack -Jack. them to Jack Jack. So I, I might have to post something in the, the in the group. chat or on, on Facebook and tag him. We finally, for one of the for one of the visits here to Houston, did a visit to Las Vegas, did something that we've never done, and we went out to a Vegas show. 
Uh oh. We've never done anything like that, but we went Hookers with. Hookers and Blow, what are we talking here? We went with Jack Jack and Andrew to go see RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, God, I'll bet that was a hoot and a half. It was indeed a hoot and a half. I it was a lot of fun. I told you, I told you, because Mark and I went to go see Sorry, Mighty Ginger. Now you know. Ah. We went to go see it um, in the first time we went to Vegas a couple years ago. And it was, it was pretty. I like pretty things. I like pretty people. It was pretty. What? It was pretty. I, I, I took a picture of myself. Jack Jack said, take a picture. And so I leaned my head over on his shoulder and went, <laughs> took a snapshot of that. Oh, Julius is timing. <laughs> Julius, Julius. I mean, was Where's your boy? Oh, no. How did this cat survive with you in Vegas? I don't understand. They they were all a little weirded out when I got back, so they've recovered. And speaking of recovering, I you got a chance to see Nefertiti before we left. Mm-hmm. She's she's doing well as well. She is downstairs in a crate, having had her snip earlier this week. Ah, cool. Not that she had to have a snip, but you know that she has snipped and everything's cool and groovy. Mm -hmm. She'll yeah. be locked up for another week, and then she'll be loose, and we'll see how how the downstairs cats react. <laughs> but she's pretty funny. She'll she'll you can hold her, and she'll do her thing, and then she'll be tired, and she'll smack you in the face. <laughs> Bip. Oh. It's not my, no claw or anything, just bip. Yep, bap. And she's bit me I'm on the now. nose, bit me on the end of the nose once. Just a nip, just like, what is with you, cat? <laughs> no, it's, you can't do it. It's a cat. <laughs> it's a cat. That's Don't all the logic that you need. Yeah. That's, she's a Siamese. That's the I, I guess that's all that really needs to be said. Uh, not necessarily. So apart from Vegas shows, what else went on at this con? What of interest happened? For me, I didn't go to any of the actual panels. I, I did not. I just did networking. Um, went to see people, talked to a lot of people, talked to a ton of people. I did get my um, next series approved by Variant, so mm -hmm. that's good. I'll be able to, to do that when the time comes. Relief? Whew. Now I don't have to think up new ideas. I can run with the ones that have been I can run with what's been in my head for months now, so there we go. You should have a shit ton of of God, the universe must be at least a tenth fleshed out. We'll see how that plays out as the story gets going, but I think it's I think it's going to be a fun place to to play around, particularly since that series is going to be much more tightly focused on a small group of people. It makes a difference. It makes a difference. Uh, it makes a difference. As Rick said, um, I flaunted my sugar daddy repeatedly. I even told him at the dinner that we had, oh, we've all decided we're going to call you our sugar daddy. His response was, oh, was it the cupcakes I made? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. He what doesn't kind of watch this show, does he? No. Good, we're safe. He has better taste. <laughs> At one point, I went into the elevator. I was going up to my room to grab something. And he was in the elevator. And I remember just going in. And I don't know if my face registered the, mm, I can't say anything, but oh my gosh, it's the sugar daddy. But that was the bit that was going through my head. And you have to remember, at this hotel, the um, elevators... They're mirrored. Yep. So even if you turn around, someone can see the expression on your face. So I am trying my hardest to hold a poker face with all of my lanyards that are saying, yes, I am definitely part of this con this conference going, don't laugh. Don't say it. Don't laugh. Don't say it. Please get me to my floor before I bust out laughing because I can only hold it in for so long. Oh my gosh. It's the sugar daddy. Ding. Leave. And then just snicker to myself. Right as the door is closing. Bye, sugar daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brett says downstairs cats imply upstairs cats. Are they divided? Yes, they are because the upstairs males try to menace the downstairs males. So for their own peace of mind, we keep them segregated. 
It does sound socially irresponsible. It's socially responsible. Otherwise, there's a war zone inside the house. Yeah, I can understand that. What else was there? Um, oh, speaking of Sugar Daddy, Sugar Daddy's production company is uh, going to be the sponsor for bringing... Um, oh, now I've forgotten his name. What is his name? Help me here. Oh, the, the keynote speaker for next yeah, year? Yeah, I've forgotten. Kevin Kevin Smith. Smith. Who's that? They... Variant is bringing Kevin Smith to uh, be the keynote speaker for next year's event, which it is not 20 Books Vegas next year. It is yeah. Author Nation. Mm -hmm. Different Excuse people. Me? Well, Craig is done. He's went ahead and they've transferred the liabilities and the promotion of the show for the last three years on that contract over to Joe Solari and his people because oh, okay. his, health is, his health is a little iffier than it was and he needs to step back. And that's perfectly cool. Mm -hmm. So they can't use the 20 books name because it's not part of 20 books anymore. Uh, so okay. it is now Same going to be author nation. Mm -hmm. Well, there's, there's probably going to be some changes. I think Joe's got some ideas of things that he'd like to try. And thus far, they've only sent out one email out of the six he was sending mm -hmm. out that are talking about the things that he's going to do. So we don't really know what it is, but I get the impression that he wants to try to bring in more readers as well as the authors. And I don't know mm. how that's going to work out or, mm. or anything about it. I'm not willing to say, you know, it's not going to work. But yeah. Kevin Smith will be the keynote speaker next year. And if I go ahead and pay an extra 100 bucks on my ticket, I can be in that little VIP section right in front of the stage so I could cheer like a fangirl. Or maybe you could. Uh, I've been close to him before. He's, well, not since he lost, like, half of himself. Actually, more like three quarters of himself. He's no longer Silent Bob size. Holy crap! Um, he's more J size now. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, for my part, say. I was I was standing in the back of the hall because at the end of the conference they have kind of like the what comes next, and that was super important this year because it was the transition from right, yeah. Twenty Books Vegas to Author Nation, and um, standing next to the Mighty Ginger, and they flash the slide and announce it. And I, I am generally not one to there fan was kind of this, people. There was a squeeing noise from the back of the room. I might have lost my shit because I, I was watching his movies to learn how to write dialogue. Right. Because it just, it made sense. And plus clerks. I, I will always watch a movie if there's a Veronica in it in some pivotal form. Yes. So, of course, I watched Clerks. And Dogma is one of my all-time favorite movies. Oddly enough, recommended to me by the campus priest when I was in college. He was like, Catholics you would like this. Catholics love that movie. Catholics oh, love that movie. It, because it, it's fantastic. Um, and it's, it's just well done. And you can watch it again and again and keep thinking. Um and then Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, which I know is a ridiculous stoner movie, was the movie that I was able to sit and laugh through when I had horrible morning sickness with my second kid. Like, I went to Walmart, got the disc, I forget if it was Blu-ray or DVD, who cares, brought it home, and I pretty much watched that three or four times because it was stupid and I could turn my brain off and follow along and I didn't feel bad. And then I bawled over Clerks 3, just straight up cried through the last quarter of it. And damn that. Yeah, that was, that was hard bawled. to get through. That was that hard was to get a, through. I mean, that was a dick punch of just like, how dare you? I can't believe you did so good. You wrapped it up and oh my God, why did you do this? Yeah. But so. So, so you're excited needless to say, I'm me. super excited, and while I will probably not pay the extra hundred bucks to sit that close, um, I will be happy to just be in the room and listen to that live and just kind of enjoy it. Because this is someone who has championed indie creations mm -hmm. and who... Probably you know, the well, the, the most the well known, probably the most well known yeah. indie creator. Yeah, and so yeah. Obviously. What I'm wondering 
is since they are spot there since variant publishing is sponsoring him there i'm wondering if there's going to be a super secret dinner with variant authors and kevin smith earlier why the hell would you pay a hundred bucks when you've got an in with the sugar daddy i don't know see i don't know that that's going to exist yet i don't know that it's real i have no idea what's going to happen can you get movies to cater it because i'd be all over that oh my god that would be too goddamn funny <laughs> Brett says there's a nonfiction coaching program called Author Nation for people who want to write like a, a memoir or their story. It's pricey, like 97 bucks a month. Oh, yeah, I don't know any. I don't know anything about that. And I would assume that they're not related. But if they aren't related, then Joe might have himself a, a little bit of a of a name issue there, a little trademarking issue. Yeah, mm. depending. Then again, not my problem. This is very true. So, Paul, one hundred dollars for the VIP or not? Nah, I don't think it's worth it. You don't think it's worth it? Nah. All right. Not unless you're going to meet him and he's going to smoke a J with you. I, I just don't think it's really. You know, you don't get the full Kevin Smith experience. Just Okey saying. Dokey. It's probably not worth it. Well, what else uh, did y'all do? B, did you go to any panels and like the slacker? I, I did because um, networking is hard for me. And I, I've i realized that I meet people better and I relax better when I have something to do. So mm -hmm. I tend to volunteer as part of the AV crew. And that's just the group that goes in and helps make sure that panelists are on time, um, that they have their placards. I usually say, ask if they need water. So I'll run and grab water. And I always have cough drops. So I ask if they want cough drops. And it's just to keep the flow of things moving. And you wind up meeting other people that you're working with. So I did attend some. I spoke on a panel um, on how writers can find and work with the right narrator for their work. Mm -hmm. um, and that was fun because I got to connect with people I met before and then meet new people. Um, I went to a couple of like romance author panels because just the, the structure and how to, how to tease out a plot, um, and keep the, the tension where it needs to be. So that was helpful. And the ones that I went to were because I had bought, um, the books or I checked out the books that they'd written. I'm like, oh, I want to hear this person speak. So there was, um, I'll have to find, I'll, I'll wind up posting it in the Facebook group, but there was one talk and they used, um, a really popular Korean drama to illustrate the, the points. So they'd show a clip and then don't you pick on me. She'll get you. <laughs> Mia will smack him hard. Mm-hmm. Well, you doing music, better, I was actually able to tell that from this far away. Um, but it was, it, that was a good panel. And then, so one of the panels that I volunteered to work on was a high powered romance author panel. Uh oh. Oh. High powered? So what does high powered mean? That means that they like, they're at six figures. Um, they've had bestsellers and kind of advice on processes and all of this so the last person on the panel the surprise guest was el james who's that for those el james wrote 50 shades of gray all righty el james and ripped off twilight to write 50 shades of gray fan fiction she wrote fan fiction and she owned up to that she, like i yeah, she did from the beginning and, pretty much yeah and she did that at the panel. The poor thing was sick as a dog. She had her mask on. She was coughing. All this. Um, she was like, she put separated herself from everyone else. And but she was she was a lovely, normal person who just knows how to write for the audience that she attracts. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't necessarily care what you think which is she shouldn't. i think I'll, she shouldn't so um but she had some excellent advice 
and she was she was lovely to listen to and it was just it was a good panel but it was nice to just it was nice to see people because what always gets me is i see people like totally lose it over certain authors Mm -hmm. and like oh we have to get a picture and do this and then to watch them just be like watching how someone interacts with their fans you learn so much about that person and then you can also take from it as like what you can do with your clients or your fans or whatever. I mean, I maintain that some of the best lessons I ever learned were when I started way, 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 way back. And like, oh my gosh, 2010, 2011 Dragon Con. I forget which one. Oh God. But I went, yeah. But I went there because Secret World Chronicle had just started and Misty asked me to go. And so I wound up being on a panel. I was in a, the first panel I was ever on was in a freaking packed room at Dragon Con with Mercedes Lackey, Larry Dixon, me, and then my, one of my other co-authors, Cody Martin. And we went to one of her book signings. And this woman has like people down the hall and around the corner. They had to cut people off. But watching how she interacted with all these people signing books and taking time for them, you know, that that's huge. And so one of one of the reasons that I like to volunteer is because I like to watch people, but I also like to see how these high powered authors, these big names interact with all the other folks there. Because I think that says a lot about them. And you can know, I, that's what I want to do, or I am not going to be that kind of person. <laughs> and I might not necessarily like what she reads, what she writes, but she was a lovely person in spite of, you know, having a horrible throat crud and trying not to get other people sick. She was still taking pictures and being gracious and, and setting boundaries. So yeah, that, that was a lovely takeaway from, from the con for me. Talking about author behavior. And not wanting to be like someone. When we were checking in. Hey, I wasn't in, there, man. When we were checking in, they were apparently having some type of issues with the check-in kiosks. Oh, they no. weren't working out very well. And there was somebody there that was obviously there for the convention, based on what was being said, complaining about it. Saying, I, I swear the words almost came out of his mouth. Do you know who I am? Who I am. I, I swear those words almost came out of his mouth. I, I don't have any idea who this person was, but he was like, my conference paid a million dollars and I'm going to let people know, blah, blah, blah. You'll never have my business again, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, wow. And the guy that was dealing with him, it's like, I'm afraid that I can't help you with that, sir. I, I can't control the electronics. I can't control what the computers are doing. All I can say is if it's not working, you're going to have to get at the back of the line on the human side so that somebody can deal with you. And after they were gone, my wife and I got up to do our electronic check-in and my wife was apologizing to him saying, <laughs> we're not all like that. We're totally not all like that. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. And he was like, you know, sometimes it happens, you know, it's just, it is what it is. And then our, our kiosk crapped out too. They're like, okay, we'll, we'll go get in the back of the line. He said, no, come over here and I'll help you. <laughs> he passed me on to another human being and uh, got us taken care of. And we were gone long before Mr. Dick Cheese got out. Dick Cheese. <laughs> His name is Richard Cheese. Dick Richard Cheese. Richard Cheese. Dick Cheese. Yeah, I have no idea who this person was or what his name was. But that's, that's the way that went. Yeah. I was hoping that I'd run into him again at the, uh, at the actual event so I could go, Do you know who I am? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy who got checked in before you because I wasn't a complete and total ass and clown. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the next time I go to Vegas... Uh, you mean like next year? I definitely want to do... There are probably going to be a couple of panels I definitely should go to. There always are. But I do need to do the networking if I can get past my anxiety and just fucking get it done or i just it's... attach myself to terry's hip but that that leads to other issues you don't even want to know about you br you can bring your own banana <laughs> that 
that's it. We'll have to come up with emotional support bananas. There we go. Emotional support. Okay. All right. All right. Jack, Jack, I hope you're not here. Uh, for next year, <laughs> for next year, you need crocheted bananas. I can do that. Do I have? Do I have yellow yarn? Let's see. Not like I've, I don't think I'm allowed to go out and get any more yarn. Black Friday is coming up and that's when all the really good sales are. I have a whole bunch of it. But yes, or, you know, stuffed bananas. Yeah, there's, that, that, that should we're, be something. Ah! Yeah, I'll bring bananas for Jack Jack, knitting them. There you go. Mm -hmm. I, can, I, I can crochet stuff. Rick pointed out he enjoyed the post-apocalyptic authors gathering. Mm -hmm. I didn't really do any of the gathering things last time. It's something I really should do. The thing is, there's just not real, there weren't really any horror writers there last time. There weren't many anyway. I think with some, with some of those gatherings, it takes someone to mention and organize them. Mm-hmm. And also, okay. it's do you know where to look? Because a lot of them are are coordinated through the Facebook group. Yeah, since I wasn't on Facebook, that was kind of a problem. Yeah. I mean, I, since the Mighty Ginger was volunteering and watching doors, essentially, which if you go and your spouse also wants to come with you, I don't know if they're going to do it again. But uh, for the second year, he volunteered and he just had a safety vest and he was making sure people had their badges and directing them to which room for which panel. So it was, he could interact. And the nice thing for me was he had my business cards in his pocket. And on his lanyard, on, a, on his little name tag, it said, my wife does audiobooks. Ask me about them. And there mm. were people that he met and he would hand out my cards. So... You never know, but that's, that's can be an option. If you've got someone who, if, if you need an emotional support, he can with you, um, but they might be bored. You know, that that's a way that they can get involved. An emotional support human. It's true. It was a great show, Paul, and I'm sorry you missed it. Well, I'm sorry I missed it too. This year just was, this has been the worst year of my life for a long, I mean, I can't remember one that's been this bad, to be honest. So it's it's, a, it's amazing. I'm even still upright. <laughs> We're a month and a half away from this fucker being gone. Life 22, 2022 was bad. 2023 made it just look wonderful. Oh, we forgot so. to talk about the author rave. Author Ooh. rave? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, there, so on the last day, I, I feel like this is something that Joe will probably build up since he wants to get more readers um, and fans to the conference. The email specifically so, said that um, the Thursday night keynote was to lead right into having bringing author bringing readers in and dump them into the Friday rave. Uh, so, okay. awesome. so I believe so. Yeah. So what Rave is, essentially, imagine an adult book fair. Like, you have... Okay, so we went there last time, right? Hundreds. That was the same thing yeah. last time. Yes. I think this one was much better organized because you had more people in the same genres grouped up. Uh -huh. um, but, and now people know what to expect. So when they're putting their tables together, they've got their displays, they have their, like, little quick pitches, and there's some freebie things. But mm -hmm. even... You know, we were there, I would think I was there for like two hours before the whole travel debacle. But walking around, chatting with people, you can get books. You can learn about titles that you'll buy later. Um, I know some authors, they had codes for their audiobooks printed on postcards. And you paid for the audiobook and you just got a postcard so you can download it at your leisure. Um, sign up for newsletters. They had special deals that you could only get at Rave. So maybe you could get a bundle of you know paperbacks for a much reduced price everybody it, it was, was very nice and it was a very fun and 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 interesting affair the only real distraction was uh rick shaw running up and down the the alleyways going buy my books please it was kind of pathetic but rick, you know, everybody else dignity, was okay man. show some dignity my god my God. 
Yeah, the rave was kind of fun last time because you bumped into some interesting people. You saw some wild, wild books, mm -hmm. uh, wild universes and all sorts of stuff you just did not really know existed. And it's all there. And that's cool. That's really yeah. cool. I do. I did. I did. I did enjoy just looking around all that. I went into the rave going, I don't need any physical books. I'm not <clears> going to buy any physical books. And I walked out with 23 books. What do you say? Yeah. Now, one <laughs> of the books that one of the books I picked up was different than the others, and I I got it here. Well, and the reason I bought this was it was a Kickstarter thing that the author had done, and this is a special hardback that she did for it that has all kinds of pretty Ooh. pictures inside. Now, I wanted to see how Ooh. that was all done because it looked so pretty. So mm. this is this is real research material because I'm like if I ever do a hardback, I want it to look like this, and I yeah, want to see I, if how I were that works. Do, if I were going to do a hardback or something like the Black or one of these, uh, preferably one of the sci-fi titles, I think that would be really fucking cool to have somebody do artwork for it and have it on the pages. Yeah. and they've had they've had vendors show up in the past because the first day of so the the conference usually runs Tuesday to Thursday, rave is on Friday. Friday, right? Monday. That's pretty. Oh, that's gorgeous. Ah. Monday winds up being industry day, which is my big thing because authors can come in early. I have my table and I can extol the virtues of audiobooks narrated with a human voice. And I, I would say that this year was my best one ever. Also, I don't know why people keep blaming me for bringing audiobook narrators. They were going to come no matter what. I just had a table because that's what you do. You go to Industry Day and get a table. I never thought otherwise. But it went from like five or six narrators and audiobook production companies to a whole row. Oh, wow. There was, we yeah. literally had audiobook row. And that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Um. And I so ran. I, in, I, I ran into Pravi Pritchko again. 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 Jeez. Just walking down the the thing, and he's passing me by, and I go, er, "Stop, Pravi Pritchko! I know you." He's like, "Do you?" <laughs> what is this person? He's a narrator. He narrates a lot oh, of okay. RPG. Ah, gotcha. Yeah. No wonder. And yeah, I always had the fun bit of talking to people who don't know me as Veronica. They know me as my pseudonym. And when I say, oh, you probably know me as this. And they blink because if they've heard the words come out of my mouth under that name, they don't expect soccer mom face. So <laughs> that's really funny. Um, <laughs> At least you're not true. a dude. <laughs> at least, well, at least you're not a are, dude. Are you assuming her gender? <laughs> no, I've met her. I know she's not a dude. <laughs> to be fair, I can marry a very convincing 15 year old boy. That wasn't so, my point. You, you know, I that. know that. <laughs> yes. But, but, um, but yeah, I actually had a conversation with an author I'd done work for after the first uh, 20 books I'd gone to. And one of his colleagues was sitting next to him. And his colleague writes uh, monster girl romance. And he were talking and I come out and I, I sat and I chatted a bit. This was during the romance author panel mm -hmm. for the learning how to keep tension and things. And the author that I'd narrated for is, oh, I love the work that you did. I'm like, yeah, I'm sorry. Your listeners didn't because it's really, really hard to follow seven books by one author, mm. by one narrator. And then you do the eighth book. Plus, it goes from seven books with a male narrator to a female narrator. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was like, I loved it. It was great. That's fantastic. I'm sorry that your listeners didn't. And then his buddy chimes in. He's like, wait, who are you? And I let them know. And he's like, oh. Finds me his covers. Will you narrate this? I'm like, <laughs> here, narrate my... this. <laughs> no, it, it, it's more like a bit... Monster Girl Romance, essentially, this is men's fantasy with large busted, whatever, you know. And so will you narrate this? Yeah. 
I'm going to make it with a Valkyrie. It's it's not like that. It's it's think lit RPG with cat girls and wolf girls and whatever and dragon girls and dragon okay. girls. It's it's a very yeah. specific thing where it takes like the monsters in a fantasy thing, but makes them into cute girls. Okay. They're not really mo- they're not really monsters, but they have the flavor thereof. If you get mm-hmm. the meaning, they're not Chimeras. quite human. Yeah, not quite human. Yeah, interesting. So anyway, but <laughs> it's so, a thing. So yeah, but that that's that's some of the networking that I wound up doing, and it's usually going, oh, you've done this, banana girls, banana girls, banana girls, <laughs> bananas in extreme pajamas. Um, Oh my god. So, <laughs> um, Pajamas with chaps. <laughs> <laughs> bananas with chaps. <laughs> Chapped bananas. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. So, yeah. Well, what do you have? Do you have any advice for folks who are thinking about going to this next year? Go. Go. I, and and I don't say that just because cuz just because well, it we should because we enjoy it and we talk about it. Even going my first year as someone who has not completed a manuscript on her own, but who understands authors and writing, there's a ton of really good information networking. I have made connections there enough that I have paid my trips. So if I can land a gig that pays for Vegas, I go the next year. The first year it was one gig. Last year, it's evolved into one book and two four-book series. This year, I'll go on. I'll talk about Walticon in a second. This year, um, there's going to be more. I had, and, and it doesn't. It's not because I press sell anything. It's because I had an authentic conversation with a couple authors and we had a couple things in common that I didn't realize we had in common. And we both had to go our separate ways. And then she goes, Oh, by the way, give me your card. We need to work together. <laughs> the thing with a show like this is that the first time you go, you're going to meet a bunch of people. Mm-hmm. Some of that may, may balance out. Some of it may not. The next time you go, people go, I remember you. And the thing that you built up the first year will grow larger and more will come of it. This networking is a cumulative yes. snowball type effect. So the mm-hmm. more times you meet with people, the more times they see you there, the more time, the more you will get out of it in a networking fashion. Okay. And with the question of Vegas or Balticon, it comes down to serious or hobbyist. Oh, That's really it. damn. Okay, I'm saying, no, I'm saying this as someone. I'm saying this as an author. I'm saying this as someone who works for authors. Mm-hmm. Authors who go to Vegas are serious about their craft and they are willing to invest money in their craft and their process and their business. I am not saying that people who go to Balticon don't, but you are going to find more serious business minded authors yeah. at Vegas than at Balticon. Balticon's a fan. At con. Balticon. It is. It's a fan con. And I've had to try to justify a basic professional rate for my narration. Oh, I can do that. I'm sure you can. Can you do it as well as I can? Do you have the equipment to do it? At the, in Vegas, I don't have to justify that. Because people people recognize your, your skill. I recognize the skill of authors who there and the discipline that it takes to write the caliber and number the sheer number of books and to stay on a schedule and they recognize my ability to take what's on the page and turn it into a performance and i I think vegas on a whole feels a lot more validating Mm. when you will have conversations that make you feel like you are doing the right thing and you're in the right place and if you're not doing the right thing, you're going to have plenty of people there that have the experience to say, I think you may be missing a boat here. I just remember mm-hmm. Patrick last year said the thing he learned was he was he was calling his he was putting his books in the wrong genre. Mm-hmm. Which was an interesting thing to say, and I can't remember what the particulars were, but I thought that was I was fascinating. Mm-hmm. 
Balticon is where I would go to hang out with my peeps and have a good time. Uh, 20 books is someplace I go to actually learn and meet people and yeah, I get a little serious. I mean, I got to spend time with Fireside Audio, who, which is kind of important since they work for me or I work for them, whatever you want to say. We, we have a symbiotic You're in a collaborative relationship. relationship. Yeah, whatever you, you want to call it. I feel like a parasite. It's awesome. Um, I just, I just, uh, I just sit back and collect money. That's how that works. Uh, so the, the, uh, that kind of stuff is very important. And the other opportunities with, with folks maybe who are familiar with, with, uh, you know, your work and even ones who aren't, you get familiar with what they're doing and, and who they are. And you may bump into somebody that, you know, but don't know if you know what I mean. You, you, you talk about our peeps and I think of Vegas folk as my peeps as opposed to Balticon, because I didn't yeah. really have a relationship no. with anybody in Balticon. No. One of the things that happened to me while I was there was I ran into Dakota Kraut, who is like the one of the biggest sellers in Lit RPG. And he said, oh, by the way, Terry, my uh, guy that does the manages my Discord flipped out over this picture that you took with me. The two of us said, oh, you're with my favorite author. <laughs> and Dakota's like, wait, wait a minute. I'm not your favorite author? And I said, how does it feel coming in second for once, Dakota? <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Well, if you have a question or comment about Terry coming in last, or does it go first? Uh, well, it's nice having people know your name. It is. You can send an email to show at devrobotsociety.com. You can find me on Mastodon at Paul underscore E underscore Cooley at V-Y-R-S-E dot social. You can find us on Facebook at the... Help me. <laughs> Listeners to the Dev Robot Society writing community. Good God. It's such it's, a mouthful. It's going to take me a while to learn how to say the that. The Dead right Robots now. Society writing community. Thank you. Dev Robot Society. Uh, uh, now I've completely lost my train of thought. If you want to see our, our mugs and way too many cats, you can find us at youtube.com slash DRS podcast, as well as for our live show, which is every, well, nearly every Saturday at 3 p.m. CST on youtube.com slash DRS podcast. And if you want to support the show, you can find us at patreon.com slash DRS podcast, as well as buymeacoffee.com slash DRS podcast, where for as little as $1 a month, you get access to exclusive live shows like the one we're going to do in Seven and a half minutes. And I'm sure that we'll have interesting things to keep talking about. Oh, good Lord. There's always oh, bad dash dragon.com. And it, they're at the $10 level. You get your name read. And our $10 patrons are Tony L. Joy, Lisa Slack, Isabel Cushy, and Tim Dieterwriter. Thank you to all of our $10 patrons and all of our patrons, actually, for making this show possible. And with that, I think we're out of here. Seems like. Do you realize we had over 12 viewers for the majority of the show? That's scary. And one on Facebook. Rick, let me explain something to you. This show is so low rent, we can't afford a script. Okay? I'm just, I'm just telling you, you know, that. Right we now. haven't been able to afford a script since the writer strike started because we couldn't have anybody writing it for us. <laughs> with that, folks, have a great weekend. Thanks for hanging out with us. Hope you enjoyed, and we will see you next week. Oh, Bye. yeah. Next week is Thanksgiving, right? And yes, Thursday is. is Thanksgiving. Thursday yeah. is Thanksgiving. So enjoy your turkey and your pumpkin pies if you're in the United States and your football. If you're elsewhere, have a great week. But you can enjoy turkey, too. <laughs>